So what I'm going to do in this video is to show you the Axune M1. Now the M1 is basically this little piece of hardware here, which is gripping my Samsung S21. And what it does is to turn certain Android smartphones with USB-C interfacing on them into effectively a HDMI video monitor. Now, as well as being a video monitor, the M1 will also allow you to record to your phone from whatever device is connected to its HDMI input. And on top of that, it will also allow you to stream whatever the video signal is coming into its HDMI input straight to the internet all via the connected phone. So what I'm going to do now is to show you the box and its contents. Then I will show you some close-ups of the M1 unit itself. Then I will go through the app installation and have a quick look at the app itself as well. And then what I will do is go outdoors and just show a quick demonstration of the M1 with this particular setup with my Samsung S21 all in use. So to start off with then, I am going to do a quick run around the box just so we can see what it all looks like. Now, the first thing I will say about this is that I am extremely happy with the fact that this box doesn't use a load of unnecessary packaging, which basically means it is going to be a lot more environmentally friendly. However, that said, the M1 is very well secured inside this box. And also, as I go around, we will start seeing some basic bits of technical information about the M1 as well. Now, looking inside the box, and we have a short USB-C to USB-C cable for connecting your M1 to your USB-C enabled Android smartphone. And then we have the M1 itself and I've left it inside its dense foam packaging here just so that you can see that during transit, this is very well protected. And then finally, the third thing in the box is the manual for the M1. So looking at the M1 itself now, and the first thing to mention here is that this is made mostly from a durable, high density plastic type material. It is very strong, but it is also lightweight as well. Now this is the front of the unit, which is where you would grip your phone. Now when it's fully closed like this, this can account for a width of a phone of 65 millimeters. However, when it is fully extended, this can accommodate a foam with a width of 90 millimeters. And then if I just get a bit of a close up here, on the inside of that gripping mechanism, we have some rubber pads here as well, so we don't scratch the foam when it goes in. Now looking at this side of the M1, on the left hand side we have got a full sized HDMI socket, which is the input where you plug your camera into. And then next to that we have got two DC output ports because the M1 can actually take a Sony NPF style battery. On the other side of the M1, from right to left, we have got a USB Type-C port for connecting to your smartphone. Next to that, we have got an on-off power switch, and that is so you can send power to your phone from an NPF battery if you've got one connected. And then next to that, we have got a four-stage LED power indicator, and this is going to be able to let you know the charge of your NPF battery if you have one connected. This is the rear of the M1, and this is basically a battery compartment for when you do use a Sony NPF style battery. And at the top end here, we also have the battery release button. The underside of the M1 has got a single female quarter 20 thread mount on it. And this will allow you to connect your M1 to any standard quarter 20 mounting option. And finally to the top of the M1. And as we can see here, this has got a built-in female cold shoe mount, which is going to be good for attaching things such as LED lights or maybe even a microphone or basically anything which connects via cold shoe. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is to install the correct app for the M1. So what I'm going to do is go to the Google Play Store and then in the search bar at the top here, I'm going to type in Axoon. So that is A-C-C-S-O-O-N 
and then hit enter or hit the search function here. Now this is going to come up and quite possibly this will be the first app that you see, which is the Axune Go app. That is not the one that we want. So what we need to do is scroll down until we find Axoon C or Axoon S E E. So what we need to do is tap on that and then let's go ahead and install that. Now that the app has downloaded and is installed, it is now time to set it up for the first time. Now, right now, I can't show you exactly the setup as it would be on my system, but I will try my best to show you how this is all wired up because we have to have the camera and the M1 attached to it in order for us to be able to see exactly what's going on here. So what it is, I've got the USB-C cable that comes supplied with the M1 connected from the phone, obviously to the M1 itself. Now I obviously will show you the phone inside the M1 shortly, but right now I have to do it this way because there's no other way I'm gonna be able to see what's on the phone screen. And then as we can see here, the M1 is connected through its HDMI port to the HDMI output from my camera, which is obviously in this instance, the Sony ZV-1. So that is the exact wiring setup that we need. However, I can't show you the setup properly right now because I won't get access to the phone properly. So with all that connected, what we're gonna do is click on open. So this is like the first time that we're gonna be opening the app here. And then I'm just gonna click on what it says monitor. Now what it's gonna do here, it is going to offer us on like our first start, the ability to watch this short tutorial. I recommend you do that. I'm gonna skip through this. So I'm gonna click on start play and it will start playing the tutorial. Like I say, you go ahead and watch that. However, what I'm going to do is just skip past that to get into the app. So I'm gonna click on go here. Now we're gonna be asked for certain permissions so that the app can communicate to the M1 and obviously through to the camera. So just agree to whatever it says here. I'm gonna just tap like, you know, let it do it when the app is running. Now I can't tell you right now exactly every single setup that's going to happen, but just agree to give access from the app to the M1 unit. And then I'm just gonna tick allow and everything that comes up here. Now, after a few moments, we should see this final request here, which is basically asking for us to be able to allow the Axoon C to access the Ever USB device. Where it says Ever USB device, that is actually the M1. So what we need to do is tick OK to that. And then now, as we can see, we are getting the live view from the M1. Now, if for any reason you don't get to see that final message, which is asking for permission for the phone to communicate to the M1, just unplug the USB-C cable and then reconnect it again until you get to see your live view like I've got right now. And once we are in this live view, we can now start using all the functions of the app itself. So this main taskbar that's in front of us, as we can see here, has got all the main functions on. So in there, you're gonna find such things as focus peaking, zebras, guidelines, all kinds of stuff. If I just kind of flick through here, you can see there's a whole ton of options. As a for instance, there's our mirror function. So as we can see, it flips the screen around and remitters it and stuff like that, which is gonna be really useful for when you're doing vlogging. Then on top of that, we've got various other functions such as guides and also the ability to reshape the screen. So as a for instance, right now, we are viewing a 16.9 frame on the phone. However, we might wanna see guides for another aspect ratio over our 16.9 picture, in which case we would click this button here. And as we can see, we will start seeing guides for various aspect ratios over the 16.9 picture that we are actually recording or that we are looking at on the phone. 
and there's a whole load of different aspect ratios that we can go to right down to 4, 3 and stuff. So obviously in this particular mode for the screen, this is going to give you a safe area if you were intending on creating 4, 3 content, but you were shooting 16, 9 as I am with this particular camera. And then as you click right the way through, it will eventually go back here. Now, right now, I don't have time to go through all the functions of the app, but what I will do is now show you the final setup of the phone inside the M1 on the camera. Okay, so this is the final setup here, and I will try and show you this as best as possible, but unfortunately for this type of shot that I'm doing here, it would be the ZV-1 that I would normally use, and that's because its autofocus is really good, so hopefully the focus is still going to be okay with this camera that I'm on here. Now, it might actually be a bit easier if I show you it from behind here. So what we've got is the HDMI coming out of the Z1 here, and it is going into the input on the M1 there. Now, unfortunately, I've got no option other than this big long cable. I would suggest getting a short cable for this particular run. Then obviously on this side of the M1, we are connecting its USB-C port to the USB-C port on the phone there. Also, one important component for this particular setup is this piece here. And this is a male cold shoe to male quarter 20 adapter. So basically this allows me to use the cold shoe on the top of the ZV-1 here, which would work for any cold shoe on any camera. And then to then just screw the top end of this particular component into the quarter 20 thread mount underneath the M1. And then at the bottom here, I've also got a pistol grip as well. And then importantly, the last step is just to grip the phone inside the grip system here on the M1. Now, nonetheless, that is the setup there. And as we can see, it is all fully active as well. So what I'm going to do is go outside and let's give ourselves a bit of an example of how this all works. Okay, so just a quick shot outdoors then. Now, let me just get really close up here to me GoPro just to give us a really good idea as to what's going on here and as we can see the size of the screen because we're using the M1 and the phone is absolutely tremendous now the thing is usually I would be using my ZV-1 for what I'm doing right now so usually it would be my ZV-1 taking this shot and I have to say sometimes when I'm kind of like getting a little bit further away from the camera what happens is I find it difficult sometimes to see what's going on on the ZV-1 screen however I have to say I've already had a little go at this here and the size of the screen the way it is now because I'm using the phone is absolutely tremendous so as far as framing is concerned this is absolutely awesome now the thing is there are going to be some things that you may not get into when you're outdoors some of the functions of what the M1 can do within the software may well lend themselves a bit better indoors because things are maybe a bit easier less stressed and stuff like that however I would have to say that that if the only thing you were going to use this system for and this setup was for framing when you were outdoors I would say it'd be totally worth it just for that because the amount of times I've kind of like not got me framing correct when I've been in front of the camera because I've been looking at a small screen it's like yeah it's really annoying however with a screen this size then yeah it's going to be a lot lot easier to start getting your framing better especially as you start getting further away from the camera and this is just a a quick example of a selfie vlog now hopefully as the GoPro should be able to show us here I've got a tremendous screen now to do my selfie stuff with now although I'm looking straight into the camera right now just before I started the take I actually did glance up quickly just to make sure that my framing was all correct and stuff now the other thing with this depending upon where you are if you've got some really interesting stuff in the background when you're doing your vlog then you're able to proper frame yourself like a lot easier than doing it on such a small screen now I'm not knocking the screen on the ZV-1 because it is very convenient absolutely however there is seriously is no beating the size of this screen for being able to like frame yourself and make sure you've got whatever you need to get in the background with your shot as well okay so 
I think that should do it for these outside shots now. So what I'm going to do is just shoot off indoors and start rounding up this video. Okay, so I think that should just about do it for this video then. Now, I do appreciate that I've kind of glossed over a little bit here on some of the points during the video. Now, the reason for that is simply because I wanted to keep this particular video as short as I could. However, I will be doing a few more videos about the M1 in the future and most notably a video about its app and the reason for that is because the app itself is very involved and is really powerful it's got some really good camera functions in it and monitor functions so I will definitely be doing something about that on its own in the future I will also do something about the recording capabilities as well of the M1 so yeah please keep an eye on my channel to do with stuff like that also as well as far as the channel is concerned please consider giving the video a thumbs up also you may want to subscribe to the channel and get on that bell notification icon button and as ever everything that i've used in this video will be available via amazon links in the description below and i will also have a link to take you to axoon's website for the product page for the m1 where you will be able to get some more information about the m1 anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now.